Good evening. My name is Joshua Fortner. Welcome to the Frontiersman Podcast. Thank you for joining me tonight. Uh, what I've decided I'm going to do is, uh, I've decided on a time uh, that, that we'll do these podcasts. Every Saturday night at 9 p.m., a new podcast uh, episode will be released. Um, you can let me know if you'd like for us to start doing this live or just do them pre-recorded as they are now. Uh, and we'll just do whatever uh, majority people want, h- however you wanted us to do this. That's how we'll do it. I'd like to do some live. Uh, then y'all can do some, uh, you know, uh, participate in the show. We can we can chat live and, you know, maybe I can answer questions or we can talk as, uh, as time permits. Um, once again, if you haven't um, headed over to our Patreon page, I uh, would love to have your support over there. You can join for as little as $1 a month. And you can support this content and uh, the other content that we create as well uh, here and on YouTube. Um, and, you know, maybe get us doing this full time, doing the leather work and, and producing all this self reliance related content uh, in a full time status. So, today we are talking about the idea of the lone wolf. Um, this is an idea that seems to been, have been romanticized. Uh, you know, we often, um, you know, in the prepper community, I've seen people, you know, say, well, you know, I'm better off on my own. I don't w- work well with others. And, you know, SHTF, I'm just going to, you know, stick to myself and, and protect my own. And the idea of the lone wolf is uh, sort of romanticized when we think of, um, People think of, you know, the uh, the lone frontiersman, you know, out exploring the wilderness, exploring the mountains, and um, perhaps the, the idea of a, a lone sniper, you know, out, out by itself, um, sneaking through the bushes, taking out the enemies. But there are some problems with, the, we, with these um, ideas, because they're not entirely true, for one, when, when we look at um, what these uh, groups actually do. And when we, when we look at the actual situation of a literal lone wolf, um, that is basically is uh, not a member of a pack, uh, but is out, out on his own, you know, doing his thing by itself. Um, there are some severe disadvantages um, to being a lone wolf. Let's take um, the, the idea of the frontiersman first. Um, the reality is the long hunters and the uh in colonial America um that were you know out in the appalachian in the appalachian mountains um uh trapping and and hunting to to bring back hides to sell back in England or and in the colonies they these were large hunting parties very large um I've read accounts where uh, one long hunter, one frontiersman would have a whole train of horses, could have three, four, five horses to carry all the gear that he needed. And, you know, you could have 30, 40 people all, um, you know, in this, in this one hunting party because their strength in numbers, um, they would probably not do very well out on their own. You know, it'd be difficult to survive, uh, from, uh, perhaps, uh, Indian war parties attacking, uh, and things like that. Uh, you know, they need to hunt for food. Um, you know, it's it's better to have 30 people out there. You know, your chances are a lot higher, um, you know, having 30 people out there hunting for food. Uh, if you've ever, if you've seen the movie The Revenant, it's a good example. You know, that's a lot of people. That was a, a very large trapping party out there, um, you know, uh, working together. It's not, this is not one guy out there, you know, you know, conquering the world. It's just, uh, you, you you know you'd be putting yourself in a very in a very difficult situation. Um, also, let's take a look at the idea of the sniper out there. You, you know, picking off the enemies all by itself. I can tell you when I was in Iraq that sniper. You know, we didn't see a, a sniper out just you know all on his lonesome wandering around. Um, they're sniper platoons. They have support. They have, um, you know, they have other riflemen with them. They have saw gunners. They have people carrying ammo. You know, you have things that you need. They need the support, you know, for the same reason. What if they got into a, um, 
you know, they got pinned down or, you know, a sniper fires and uh, everybody knows where it's coming from. Uh, so they need that support um, to defend them. They're not out really crawling along by themselves with no kind of, you know, support, no kind of backup, no kind of assistance. It just, that's just not how it works uh, from the most part and from from what I've personally seen. And um, let's take wolves, for example, where, where this idea comes from, the, the lone wolf, you know, out there howling at the moon all by itself and, you know, taking down a herd of elk uh, all by his lonesome. Wolves and people are similar in the fact that we are um, social creatures. We are interdependent. We actually need each other um, for certain things. You know, and once again, there are strength. There is strength in numbers. Um, you know, wolves. Wolves operate in a. Um, um, there is a hierarchy, and you know, there's the alpha, and, and there's the the omega. And um, there's really not very many benefits to being a lone wolf. They need their pack. Um, sometimes they will leave their pack because they are not the alpha. You know, they're they're low on the totem pole, and they're getting um, basically, you know, they're getting scraps that are left over. So they may go off to hunt small animals on their own, like rodents, you know, rabbits and mice and things like that because they're hungry. And they're just not high up in the, um, you know, high up in the uh, hierarchy there. And they just kind of feel like they need to go out and, and, and do their own thing. But they're put at a serious disadvantage. Uh, I, I remember reading an article. Um, well, I didn't read the article. I heard a uh, study that was done on the radio a while back that was talking about this. And I have an article here in front of me um, uh, online. It says... Uh, are there any benefits for lone wolves? I'll just read this to you. Existing as a lone wolf requires strength, aggressiveness, and courage to face the solitary world. Okay, so let's take that sentence. Because this is how a lot of people with the lone wolf mentality think. You know, I'm strong, I can be aggressive and courageous, and I can face the solitary world on my own. However, and the article continues... When a wolf leaves a pack, it leaves behind the security offered by the other pack members. And since wolves are territorial, a lone wolf would have limit have to limit its howling to avoid disclosing its location. So, you know, as I said, um, they need the security of the pack. Um, the, the other members, you know, wolf packs can be, says here, from uh, 12 to 40 members. Um, they're large packs, um, and that they help each other survive in a lot of different ways. Like I said, they're social creatures, and, and we are as well. Um, furthermore, the article continues. Furthermore, they have to deal with little to no such. Or they have to deal with little to no success when hunting and settling. And excuse me, let me start over there. Furthermore, they have to deal with little to no success when hunting and settle for small prey. Or scavenge on scavenge on carcasses. So you know, do you want to you know stick with the pack and you know have you some have you some elk meat, or you want to you know scavenge up carcasses and you know what scraps you can find out there on your own. Sadly, lone wolves do not last long out there. Chances of being killed due to trespassing in other packs' territory are high. However, if they survive, they might have a good chance of meeting up with their alpha half, and to the, together they could establish a pack of their own. This was evident in a wolf pack that left his pack in Finland, crossed the border, and helped rekindle a dying wolf population in Sweden. Ultimately, if all does not go well out there, home is best. The lone wolf calls it quits, packs up, and heads back to its pack. That's if the other pack members accept it back. So, you know, there's a lot of things to take away from that. Um, when you, you know, you're applying it to yourself in a, in a um, preparedness aspect or really any aspect of your life. Um, I think it's especially important when we're talking about SHTF and um, 
you know, what you would, you know, think you would do in that situation. Um, as preppers, the ideal thing is to, the ideal situation is to build a mag, a mutual assistance group. Um, even if it isn't something formal, which it should be, you should get together with people and, and train and um, be prepared and have plans to help each other in disaster. Because you as a lone wolf are at a serious disadvantage. Um, you, you know, you are facing um, starvation in, in, in a situation like that. Um, you know, and, and even, even as, as the, as it said about the wolf packs being, uh, or the lone wolf trespassing in other packs territory, uh, you know, you could be facing something like that as well. There are groups of people say, you know, after SHTF, there's groups of people that have established boundaries and, uh, here you are the lone wolf, you know, walking up in, in there all courageous and. You know, coming to scavenge because you don't have a group for yourself and you end up with a bullet in your head. Um, because you thought it would be best to do things your way and, and be on your own. Um, when you would have been a lot better off to be an, a member of a group of some sort. Um, so I would like to encourage you, if you are in that lone wolf mentality, to um, really think about it. Take an honest look at that and... Uh, think you know would you be better off really um on your own like that or uh do you see the clear advantages of um belonging to a pack belonging to a tribe um and once again i encourage everybody to get out there and build relationships um build those communities and build those groups that can help each other in a, in a disastrous situation like that you need people for defense, you need people to grow food, you need people to bandage your wounds, uh, you need people to, to wash the clothes, to, to do the cooking, to, you know, I mean, the, the things that you need are, are endless. And I've said many, as I've said many times before, nobody can be entirely self-reliant. You will have to rely on other people um, for some of the things that you need. Uh, it's just not efficient for you to try to do everything, and it's it's just not really possible. So please, um, break out of the lone wolf mentality if you're there, and uh, run with the pack. Thanks for tuning in tonight, and uh, our time is about up. These are 15-minute episodes. Uh, I will be able to create longer ones in the future uh, if I can upgrade my account here on Spreaker. Uh, but we won't do that, really, unless you know we can get some uh, more support to to fund that over at patreon so please if you uh if you'd be so kind head over there once again and join us it's you can join for as little as one dollar a month or you can join the five dollar a month or the ten dollar a month tiers um the ten dollar a month tier ten dollar a month tier of course you get um higher you know 20 percent discount free repairs i send out gifts to everybody uh, every so often um sometimes they'll be the uh, frontiersman level the ten dollar level content only uh, some things I only send to them so uh, but either way we'd love to have your support at any level over there and help us grow and help us start doing this thing full time so I will see you next time goodbye frontiersmen